Welcome and greetings to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist uh, operating out of Seclair, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues, and on my right would be... I'm Kayla Esteline. I'm a PA student from St. Francis. And on my left would be... I'm Ann Sommerfeld, and I am a PA student from the University of Mount Union. Great, great. So, as everyone may know or may not know, uh, what we do each week is we try to present a topic of interest that you can incorporate in your general overall life. Uh, Seclair is an integrative uh, psychiatric facility operating on uh, holistic principles where we try to look at mind, body, spirit of an individual. We don't label anyone, we don't try to put anybody in boxes, but try to examine a person's whole human experience to find out how the, the possible areas in their life can be enhanced. And what we're going to talk about today is, uh, I was talking to uh, Kayla at one point and I said, Kayla, how's, uh, how's, how's life going? I feel like I'm kind of in a rut, like I'm doing the same thing day after day and don't really have a lot of control over what I choose to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you ever feel like same stuff, different day? Oh, yeah. Did you ever say that to anybody? A lot. Right, and sure. And sometimes what we can do is we can get we can get stuck in that in that drudgery. We become robots. We can we can be trudging through our life without any particular particular type of purpose or joy. And I'm going to ask you this today, is there any joy in your life? Is there any joy in your life? And as one of my uh, favorite individuals, Thomas Merton, says, we were we were made for we were made for joy. We weren't made for pleasure. I'm sure that everyone knows what uh, what pleasure is. And if you don't know the difference, then perhaps you haven't yet begun to live. So tell me tell me what brings some joy in your life, Kayla. Um, a couple things like uh, reading. Um, I love my animals. You definitely. love your animals. They give you some joy. Yes. So tell me. In your own mind, what would be the difference between pleasure and joy? Pleasure would be, let's see, pleasure would be maybe something more material. Um, I, I kind of think of it as more like how you want to get experiences more so than material things. Sure, absolutely. What would be your thoughts on the difference between pleasure and joy? Um, I mean, initially, they sound very similar, um, but yeah, like Kayla was saying, um, I would say joy is more of, yeah, like a feeling and pleasure is something um, that you want to get from material things, doing things over and over again, and joy may be more of like an emotional, pleasure is, yeah, sure, and pleasure, pleasure is more of a self-gratification thing, wouldn't you think? Yep. Pleasure is more of selfishness and mm -hmm. self-centeredness, wouldn't it? So the people with uh, drinking, drugs, gambling, uh, consensual sex, uh, the, those those dif different type of things, where we're looking for some type of immediate type of relief and gratification. Mm -hmm. Okay, so joy is an entirely an entirely different type of thing. So and again, when we're talking, Kayla, about people walking through their lives, becoming human doings human doings you're just doing okay uh, so have you ever seen a horse race I've watched uh, them thoroughbred horse race yeah okay. watched have you seen one Kayla okay kind of. okay they're big magnificent animals and they can do one thing and do one do well right so however what do what do uh, what do horse what do these thoroughbreds wear over their eyes the blinders they wear blinders right and sometimes that's the way we walk through life we walk through life with blinders on. We believe we may be doing things so very well, but we have blinders on to the exquisite joy of existence. So the idea is that what we could ask people is to begin to open and view each day with a beginner's mind, with a beginner's mind. And did you ever, have you ever been around a three or four year old? Yes. Sure, you betcha. Have you ever seen a three or four year old that guy sparkle? Mm -hmm. Sparkle. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen when they're out in the when they, when they experience things and it's just fascination? Fascination. They're fascinated with being alive. They're 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 fascinated. And uh, do they ask a lot of questions? Oh yes. They do. <laughs> Why do you think they ask a lot of questions, Kayla? And trying to understand the world around them. They're curious, are they not? Yeah. They're curious. And uh, and do you think they're participating in the moment? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Are they are they thinking about tomorrow? No. Nope, they're thinking about yesterday? No. Nope. Where are they? 
They're right now. And quite mm-hmm. often, what I'll ask people is, "What time is it?" Right now. What time is it, Kayla? Right now. Okay, so right now, let's 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 be here and right now. And quite often, individuals have the lenses in their glasses reversed. Okay, where we're looking at the world through these eyes, and we can only view the negatives. We can only view um, the things that we can't do. Okay. Did you ever did you ever think that? Did you ever think of taking a test? Did you ever think of going somewhere? And the first thing you think of is all the things that would prevent you from doing that. Mm-hmm. You ever mm-hmm. believe that? Sure, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So if we would reverse those lenses and perhaps think the things that all we can do, the things that that we can we can look at. at. So let's uh, let's put on a new pair of glasses. Could you put on those new <laughs> pair of glasses? Okay. Do you do you feel any do you feel any different? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> well, sure. So here you are in this life and in this world, and you both have a new pair of glasses on. So then you don't have to literally do this, although I think it would be pretty neat. So, and if you would walk down the street like that, uh, do you think do you think some people might step out of their uh, human doing and start actually pay attention to you? Oh, yeah. And pay attention on purpose? Oh, yeah. Right. Do you feel a little foolish? Yeah, that's okay. funny. <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel a little playful? Yeah. Okay. So the idea is to add a little bit of add a little bit of playfulness in your life. So I'd like to I'd like and I know that you both are in uh, physician's assistant school, which is more of an endurance test than a learning experience sometimes mm-hmm. at this point. Okay. And if you both stand at the end, then you win. Okay. So do you ever do you ever feel like you're a human doing? Yes, definitely. Talk to us about that. Especially like in school, like, okay, my next responsibility is taking this test and then I have another responsibility to study and I, it just keeps going on and on and on. So it takes a while to kind of break out of that habit. And you, Anne? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm constantly like, oh, I have to study. I have to write this paper. I have to think of a topic. And um, if it can, can become hard to really just sit back and relax and take in the moment. Absolutely. So could you read some of these statements for us? You can take your glasses off if you care yeah, to. Yeah, falling off. Yeah, mine's <laughs> sliding down. Um, one of them is, I have so much to do. There is so much to be done. There's, there's some pretty common feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is not enough time to do... We are so busy doing anything. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. Right, right. So some of the self-defeating words that we often use, I need to, I have to, I must, I, I should. should. Yeah, absolutely. So when we reverse, when we when we shift our sails a bit, uh, perhaps what type of words could we use? I choose to. I cho- Talk to me. Talk to me about that. Um, whenever you're saying the words I choose to, it's more like you're taking control of whatever you're doing rather than some external responsibility forcing you to do something. Absolutely. Do you feel like, uh, do you feel like a lot of your life's an obligation, Anne? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you like it to, would you, would you prefer it to be more of a choice? Yeah, I definitely would like to be more of a choice. Okay, and tell me some, tell me some things that you could do to make that happen. Um, I mean, there's just certain like activities um that i like to do i mean like skiing running hiking uh, but even just taking a step back and starting small like maybe each day just sitting and not thinking about anything just sitting there or listening to a song relaxing you know always taking time um just to be in the moment each day and some of the things that you were talking to me about uh, today about the things that you like when you participate in life what you like to do could Mm -hmm. you share a little bit of that with us um i definitely um i really like cooking Um, not always the best cook but it's something that i think is fun to do um when i do it i'm not like oh i have i have to cook these cookies to get them done and um i like just learning how to cook i think it's exciting um even skiing skiing something um that's definitely harder for me to do but I enjoy um, learning it every time I go. Wonderful and do you feel like you're participating in your life when you're doing these things? Oh yeah definitely. Okay okay did you ever feel like your life's an obligation Kayla? Yes. Yes absolutely absolutely so we are human beings and we're not human doings and if your life has become a, a drudge if the first thing have you ever met anybody Kayla that on Friday afternoon after work the first thing they think of is that I have to go back to work on Monday yes mm-hmm 
Mm -hmm. So, how could how could what what would be some of your suggestions, Anne? Perhaps some people could perhaps change that type of mindset. Um, I think spending time with people, like on the weekends, like trying to make plans with either family or friends, if that's what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're not thinking about, oh, I have to go back to work on Monday. It's like, oh, I get to go spend time with my mom, or I get to go see my niece. Um, I can take them to the park or do things like that, um, making plans. And you're reversing the lenses in your mm -hmm. glasses. You're reversing the lenses in your glasses. Well, that's uh, that's really wonderful. And one of the things you were talking to me this morning, we were dealing with an individual, and I was talking to you about how uh, people make behavioral changes, and you told me that you start with small. Yes. So how does, how does that work in your life? Tell me about that. Um, I guess I try each day. Now I do, but I try each day just um, doing little things, like I said earlier, just taking time, like not turning on the TV and watching a program, just taking time to sit there, relax, collect my thoughts, um, even if it's just for a minute or two, um, it can be enough to just bring you back into the moment. Um, even just listening to a song that you enjoy for a minute or two, um, maybe making a quick snack, um, sitting down and not really thinking about uh, the day that just happened, just kind of sitting there and enjoying the moment. Being there. Being there, absolutely. Absolutely. Kayla, how do you handle do things like that? Um, since I do have so many obligations, I try to... Um, I know you gave me the suggestion, make it fun over the weekend, and I thought, well, okay. I, I had to do this very long paper for my school, um, so instead of griping about it and trying to do it at home, I went out and I went to Starbucks and I bought myself a treat. And after I made a lot of progress, I went to um, went window shopping and I went to PetSmart and looked at all the little cats in the window and wow. just something to make myself happy. That uh, so you you began to participate in your life rather than having that obligation of mm -hmm. that I have to do this. Yes. And it sounds like you, you chose to do that. Well, that's wonderful. Well, and again, I hope that uh, you enjoyed today, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, the glasses, and please keep in mind that you can you can reverse the lenses in those glasses whenever, whenever you choose. And uh, we're going to ask uh, Miss Kayla to take us out and show us how you can contact us further. Okay, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google+, Plus, or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. And keep an eye on any of these for our next live recording Mondays around noon to ask your own questions. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on youtube.com slash video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And if you choose to... Uh go to the Seclair website. My hope is that you'll uh, save a date and pay attention to May the 1st of uh, this year, 2015. Uh, Seclair will be sponsoring a brain health and wellness uh, conference at the Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville, Pennsylvania, where we're going to be presenting many health professionals with uh, validated scientific evidence that, that, that these enhancements to your life can make a make a life worth living and my hope is that you all be able to give your life out loud and as usual we'll give our free prescription fruits nuts and vegetables unplug your television and uh, perhaps take up fishing and for a truly mindful experience we fish without bait so until the next time uh, your commitment and your assignment is to be good to yourself until next Monday thank you so much for attending